Okay, so good morning, everyone, and welcome to our professional scientific and technical services sector panel. My name is Cal Fackerdeen. I'm a research associate at Workforce Windsor Essex, and I'm excited to be facilitating this session with my colleague, Nick Persa. Workforce Windsor Essex is a community and development board whose mission is to lead regional employment and community planning for the development of a strong and sustainable workforce. To learn more about what we do and how we can help you, please visit WorkforceWindsorEssex.com. While this event is virtual, we'd like to respectfully acknowledge on the land that we gather today is a traditional territory of the Three Fires Confederacy of First Nations, comprised of the Ojibwe, the Odawa, and the Padotomi peoples. We are grateful to work, learn, and live in this area. P please feel free during this event to use the chat feature at the bottom of the window to engage with the session attendees and the speakers, and you may submit questions at any time through the session using the chat. Uh, before we get into today's conversation, we'd like to share some information regarding the uh, professional, scientific, and technical services sector. As one of the most promising sectors in Windsor-Essex, it currently employs 6,571 employees in our area, which accounts for about 3% of the local workforce. As of February 2023, there are 439 active postings in this industry, and the industry is projected to grow by 7% in the next five years. Okay, with that in mind, I'd like to welcome our speakers for today's event, and we're going to start with some introductions. So, uh, Frank, why don't you start? Sure. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Frank Abertzazy, CEO and President of AlphaCore. We're an IT company here in Windsor, and uh, what we specialize in is uh, full IT solution, cybersecurity, websites, web marketing, and custom software. And uh, we enjoy being part of the uh, local uh, IT community. So thanks for welcoming me. Excellent. Thanks, Frank. And Ranem? Hello, uh, this is Ranem. Uh, I'm a newcomer to Canada, but I am really, really fascinated in uh, technology and web development and AI. I've been before an AI instructor, okay, back, back home. And now I am an intern in Toraco Web as web developer. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me as well. Okay, great. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so we're just going to jump into our first question, which is how did you find yourself in the sector? Um, Renam, do you want to go first? Okay. Uh, as uh, I was studying uh, electronics engineering at the university, okay. I was really fascinated about the technology and the software as well, not only the hardware. So I joined a boot camp of six months uh, about uh, uh, programming and data science. And then I worked as trainer for data science. So I was preparing people to start their career in data science as, as data scientists and programmers. And that's how I started my career uh, in the sector. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing. Um, what about you, Frank? Well, my story is really different. I got into this sector by accident about 35 years ago. After graduating University of Windsor with my uh, business degree, I had the opportunity to work in uh, IT in terms of uh, retail sales and was able to learn quickly the uh, technology and bring the conversation both for families and then businesses to help bridge the gap uh, in terms of uh, fulfilling uh, IT investments with uh, business strategies. So it's been quite a, a really exciting career. And as everyone can probably appreciate, a whole lot of changes have happened in 35 years. So I'm very happy and proud to, uh, to be uh, part of this uh, sector. It's been very interesting and uh, I love seeing uh, the young talent that's coming up the pipe. And the future looks really bright in this industry, so I'm very happy about that. And that's very encouraging to hear because uh, since we have panelists that have very different backgrounds and very different paths, for example, to, from Ranem's path to her position at Taraco and yours at AlphaCore, this is kind of something that we found very exciting about having uh, this panel assembled today. So when it comes to those different backgrounds, we also want to talk about how um, the experiences on a day-to-day -day basis can differ for our panelists too. So I'll start off with you, Frank. Uh, what would you say a typical day looks like for you? Well, typical day, I beat the alarm clock and up at 4.45 a.m., hit the gym, do my prep uh, 6.20 to 7 a.m., 
in terms of organizing my day, I'm very task oriented and a priority order, but the day never shapes up to be that way. And then uh, in the office from uh, eight to five-ish, a lot of virtual meetings that we've had during COVID and a lot of uh, meetings out on the road. I really enjoy uh, the face-to-face -face meeting. I extremely like sitting at a boardroom table with uh, the IT and the business. If we can get both uh, areas in at a meeting, those are exciting. The fun part is uh, I've been able to be very fortunate. So many great organizations and resources in the community. I've been able to volunteer, sit on boards. So there's board meetings, there's events to attend to. And my special favorite is uh, mentoring. I've mentored, mentored some people along the way. I currently have adopted uh, three people that I'm mentoring right now and helping them grow their business. And that's been very exciting. And on another volunteer hat, um, giving back to help people connect. I started a second networking group that we run once a month to help others. So kind of a little bit uh, balance, a little off a little volunteer, and uh, it's, it's been really exciting. It doesn't have to be work all the time, but it all leads to work in the end when we're making connections. Great, so it's a pretty well-rounded day when it comes to being in your sector from your perspective. Absolutely. Great, and for yourself, Ryan, what would you say a typical day uh, looks like for you doing your work? Okay, first of all, I start my work at nine o'clock, okay? Checking my emails and the tasks I have to do. Then I start uh, reading codes of others, okay? To have an idea of what others, what my colleagues done, okay? Then I start doing my tasks, okay? After that, I have a, a special time for learning new technologies and uh, developing myself and the new technologies. Great. So again, just like our first question, there's a lot of variety when it comes to our panelists in terms of what their do what their duties are on a day to day basis. So that's really great to see. Yeah. Yeah. It's also interesting with tech because a lot of jobs are remote. Um, so you could really do them from everywhere, but we'd like to know what the best thing about working in tech in Windsor, Essex in particular is for you guys. Um, Renam, do you want to give that a go? Okay. Uh, the best thing here about uh, Windsor, Essex is the uh, embracing community, tech community, okay? The tech community here is very welcoming and very nice uh, to be in. Uh, and uh, this is the best thing, thing for me. Okay, and actually living here in Windsor is very, very kind experience because the also the community here is very welcoming and it's cheaper to live than the greater uh, cities. Yeah. Yeah. So I like to be here. Yeah. That's good to hear that there are specific advantages to this location. Um, that's definitely what we want to hear when we ask that question. Uh, what about you, Frank? Well, I, I totally agree with a lot that you said. The community welcoming us um, is, is definitely awesome in this area. For me, it's um, the Alpha Koreans. I struggle during COVID because I, I usually do what's called laps around the building. We have a team of 55 people. So when COVID started, we were only six in the office. So I struggled with really interacting with, with our own team. But that to me is the most exciting part. To see uh, technical, non-technical developers, different personalities, and really reaching out and caring about them and, and engaging in conversation about their personal and their business uh, that they're working on, to me, is uh, self-rewarding to lead a company and really get to know the people that are in here and how they're making a difference. And I hope that I make a difference to them to keep encouraging them to grow with their career path. So for me, it's always been exciting. And that's very encouraging as well, too, from the perspective of somebody who may be working in professional scientific technical services that may want to consider moving to Windsor or the Windsor-Essex area to hear that uh, the sector in Windsor-Essex has a very strong sense of collaboration, of kind of camaraderie. If I'm getting what both of you are saying correctly, that is a really, really great thing to hear. And I mean, to be frank, that's a real, no pun intended, uh, that's a really good selling point for our region, that this can be an area where people can grow those skills with like-minded people. So that's, that's very encouraging to hear as well, too. Uh, when it comes to um, when you're working on the job, obviously not 
Um, everything, everything always like goes to plan. You may have to change stuff up um, as you go along. So the next question that we have, and I'll start with Frank, is what would you say the biggest challenge you face is on your day on the job? It's a big, it's a big one. It's called communication. Communication and to me is the root of all evil in business. We've uh, resorted to texting and uh, email. Unfortunately, there's no emotion attached to those communication tools. We, the reader, uh, attach our own communication. There's a lot of joking, sarcasm, smiley faces, et cetera, emojis. So I would say since the beginning of, of my career, it's always been communication. How can I effectively communicate from a technical point of view when I'm a technician and uh, filling in my service log and how we took care of an issue or problem to responding to communication. So that's always been a, a real big challenge that I've worked extremely hard and uh, helping the team doing specific training on communication and uh, providing constructive feedback, which uh, not everybody truly enjoys. However, I would say that's been the biggest challenge. Whenever we hear, I thought they were gonna do this. I thought you were gonna do this. I was expecting this. I thought that, so that's something we hear on a regular basis, human nature. And I find that part of it um, is a big challenge for me because I uh, like to avoid all of that and minimize it as much as possible. Okay, great. Yeah, so again, it's kind of being able to kind of deal with those as they come along too. It's obviously kind of a moving target from what it sounds like, but I mean, I'm sure that's part of the reward when those things can get resolved that you're like, okay, now that's off my plate. I can kind of deal with that. Great. And uh, Ranem, when you're doing your work, especially at Turco Web, what would you find is the biggest challenge that you face on the job? Okay, I agree with Frank about communication and the old tech sector here and back home. Okay, it is hard to just uh, connecting by emails because emails are emotionless and sometimes doesn't uh, doesn't uh, get the clarif the clarification of the message. Okay, so I agree with Frank about that, and also I think that. Uh, uh, in the tech sector, uh, generally, the most, uh, let's say, difficult thing is to be is to be following up with the latest technology because every day there is a new technology and you have to learn it, okay? And you have to forget about the last technologies you've learned before. So that is not an easy task for the developers uh, at all. It's not uh, an easy task. But you ha we have to embrace the, ch the change every day, okay? And to learn these technologies every day. Uh, and that's it. Yeah, it seems like when... I mean, I'm sure this is true in uh, many other sectors as well too, but especially in this, um, that those challenges, because they'll come up on a daily basis, and especially when they can be as radical as technology overhauls and that sort of aspect of uh, the jobs involved in this sector, the idea is that those challenges are also an opportunity. That's what I'm getting uh, between those two too. And both of you are very passionate about facing those challenges and being able to resolve that too, from what I see. Yeah, of course. And just based off your comments on communication and considering that uh, tech is an industry that relies kind of heavily on remote work, um, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on remote work. Uh, what do you think we benefit from it? And what do you think the challenges are? I know communication is a big one, especially for Frank and just a little bit of that isolation, um, but is there anything else you might wanna mention? Okay. The question is for me or for Frank? Um, either of you, but let's, uh, Renam, if you want to start, go ahead. Okay. Uh, actually, the remote work is somehow has some benefits, of course, like you don't have to go in transportation, okay, and uh, you don't, uh, you avoid this, uh, you avoid this, uh, let's say, uh, okay, we have we have saved time actually, okay, by by remote work, okay, but it has uh, so many uh, cons, let's say, uh, like uh, isolation, as you said before, like uh, you don't connect with your uh, colleagues and you don't know them, okay, and that's really bad. I, for me, I really prefer working from the office 
for the most of the days, okay? And maybe for one or two days uh, the week from home. Yeah, so I know a lot of people advocate for a hybrid model, which is what we do at Workforce Windsor Essex. And I know that usually ends up in, a, in better employee satisfaction. So I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that. What about you, Frank? Well, the benefits we find with a remote workforce is they're readily available. Just, just transportation is one of them, but the other is they're up in the morning, they're already at their desk, they're ready to go. So mo mo being mobile 24 seven uh, in this industry, that, that makes a huge difference. Response time increases. Uh, benefits is um, as an employer, we can uh, recruit uh, individuals from abroad. They don't have to be in the uh, Windsor Essex space per se. So that's uh, opened up doors to other talent outside the community. However, um, the talents come in here, which is good news, right? Because they see this as a place for their careers. On the challenge, I agree with, uh, with, with said. We miss what's called the water cooler chat. I mentioned my laps. The, those are interacting with, with people is really important on building those strong relationships with the team. When we were uh, virtual only, there were six of us in the office I mentioned earlier, and a lot of people laughed at this thing that I implemented, uh, you know, exactly three years ago, March, when it all hit and stopped. I did uh, Friday 4.30, a virtual team meeting with the Alpha Koreans, and everybody was on at first, and they looked forward to the, I'm going to call it the virtual hug before the weekend, because everybody was trapped in their home, there was nowhere to go, they felt isolated, they felt abandoned, they felt like they weren't interacting with people anymore. And that 45 minute uh, weekly uh, Friday touch point at the end of that day made a huge difference in, in the relationship and showing that, you know, we as employers care about our employees and making sure that we were uh, reaching out to them and helping them with whatever they needed and being available um, even on the weekend at night if there's anything that they needed. So I think that was really critical with your uh, remote force. We still need to treat them as uh, they're still under our roof and care about them. That's the, I think the key, showing that you do care and continue that communication. Yeah, that's great to hear. Um, it is really important that you find a model that works best for you and for your employees. So obviously there are some drawbacks and some benefits there, but it's really interesting to hear your thoughts on it. Um, next question. Yeah. So what would you find between, um, again, whether you're working remotely or whether you're in the office, um, there's still certain um, expectations that are brought for employees and yourselves to uh, perform on the job. So the next question uh, pertains to what skills do you find are necessary in your role? And we'll start with uh, Renan. Okay, as a web developer intern, uh, I find that, uh, I find out that uh, problem solving is uh, the most important skill in programming, okay? And then enhancing your programming language skills, you're, you're dealing with the frameworks uh, and the latest technology, uh, working with version control. Uh, okay, that's very technical, actually, uh, words maybe. Okay, working with the version control uh, programs and so on. But also we have uh, to collaborate with, uh, with other colleagues, okay, and communicate with them. And uh, I think uh, as well, uh, as I said before, that problem solving is still the most important. Yeah. Perfect. So, uh, Frank, uh, what would you say on in your role and even uh, maybe employees in your space, would you find the skills are the which skills are the most important for their roles? So there's different areas. So the non-technical side of it, the sales and admin side, you know, you need a, a basic uh, skill set to, to obviously use uh, the technology. So the soft skills are important. The technical team, there's, you know, CompTIA, there's uh, your A plus certification. If we're looking at Cisco, there's Cisco certification. You know, the college you're working at developing a cyber curriculum, which I'm all excited about. Developers, they need to know the languages. Um, in the custom software area, it's .NET or Microsoft on the .NET. And then in the web is everything that you can imagine in terms of uh, WordPress, P PHP, et cetera. So there's all these languages that are a benefit and an asset. The soft skills, the biggest one, 
when I refer to soft skills, uh, you know, every organization is going to have some uh, core values. So your soft skills, you have to be able to be a team player. It doesn't work if we're not a team player. You need integrity. Things just don't work if, if uh, we don't have good intentions or being, you know, transparent. So the, those are really important. And in interviews, when we uh, look at the candidates, there might be some that are better qualified, but some that are not quite as qualified might shine on the soft skills, which will uh, might might uh, tip the scale in their favor over someone that has just all the paper certifications, if you will. So that's what we kind of look at uh, in terms of uh, recruiting and uh, joining our team. And that's and that's so interesting too because when um, maybe people who are not super familiar with the sector think about what it's like to work in tech, professional scientific services, those technical skills really seem to kind of jump out in people's minds. So my my ears kind of went up when you said, well, listen, there are all these uh, programming languages that people should learn and all these technologies that people have to adjust to, but the most important one is those soft skills. Mm -hmm. And that is something that really jumps out to me because it seems that um, even in that very um, fast moving uh, tech environment, that being able that it does come down to how you're able to kind of conduct yourself with others, be a team player, for example, um, be able to meet things like deadlines and like Renem, things like problem solving that aren't even specific to a certain like whether you can use Python or you're proficient at working in WordPress. At the end of the day, what it comes down to is if you see that challenge in front of you you're thinking to yourself, okay, well, how can I hit the ground running with this? So that really kind of jumped out to me uh, for what you both were saying, how it comes at the end of the day, it come, a lot of it comes down to how people are working with people, even in the tech sector. So that's really, really interesting to hear. And uh, following that, just regarding the programming skills that you guys have learned, we just are curious what kind of educational background brought you to this role. So when it comes to those specific programming, um, courses, did you take those in university or were those supplementary courses you did after the fact? I think it would be really helpful for future students to know that. Um, Renam, could you give that one a go? Okay, actually I have a degree in electronics engineering, but not that uh, what helped me in the sector. What helped me really in the sector is a boot camp that I have I've, uh, took in uh, 2021 okay after i finished my university degree uh, it was boot camp of six months okay i learned how to code i learned how to be a problem solver i learned some data science in it so this is how i started okay and i think not everybody needs a boot camp okay but that was a scholarship i could earn okay but you can learn from the internet nowadays. You can be self-learner and hit the ground with the, with, the, with the programming, okay? Yeah, well, that's great to know because talking with employers, we found sometimes that there's kind of a disconnect between students just leaving um, university or college. Sometimes they don't have that practical knowledge yet, um, knowing which programs and how to use the programming. So it's interesting to know that you did kind of a supplementary course and a, a whole boot camp just to learn those specific things. And I think a lot of people think the second they finish university, they're all set to go right into the workforce and that might not always be the case. So um, that's really interesting. Thank you. Um, Frank, what about you? Well, if we can go back to uh, the mid nineties before the internet was around, the technical team would always take courses would always study, would read technical material and bring in all the cool new stuff and all the cutting edge. Somewhere that kind of stopped where it seems like um, they're not self-taught, self self-learning to take these courses. We offer it and we pay for it. What we look for would be an A-plus minimum. St. Clair's got three awesome, the Mobi, the web, and the uh, networking, and I mentioned cyber's coming up. The university has got computer science. So all of those are going to be really good and in your favor. But I don't think we need to stop there. When Random said earlier, it, it changes daily. Um, I'm going to argue it changes hourly. That's been my, uh, <laughs> my take in this industry for a very long time. I think if you want to continue to, um, to, to advance your career or look at this industry, you're going to have to invest some of your own personal times where I'm going with my story. I find that's lacking today, not for everyone, but the majority just seem to 
not really want to take their own initiative and do it. So work with your employer if uh, they're going to pay for uh, certifications, if they're going to give you time off. Like we have a uh, study study time that uh, during the day they're writing the exams. So I would look at that and then you want to specialize, right? I mentioned Cisco before. So they, they tend to be leaders. So find something that's your passion that you really like and, and really find out what more education, what more certification you can get. Mm -hmm. The experience comes with it after. And I think those are important to keep in mind that you continuously advance. I'm uh, personally always doing training and, and reading, right? There's business books that I'm reading. It can be technical manuals and things, but you always have to advance your skill. Yeah, and it seems like, again, on the part of employers too, that's kind of something that, that is getting a lot of revived interest in the idea that things like P, uh, professional development are a really important part of the work environment because it develops a really strong relationship between employees and employer. At least that's what I'm getting there too, because it feels like when employee when employees can come in, they can feel like their employer's like, hey, listen, I'm it's in it's in my interest, it's in your interest that we both can kind of get ahead on this. We could be on, be on the same page. So that's really encouraging to hear that those who are looking to uh, work in uh, Windsor, Essex and tech will have those opportunities where they are there are employers that are willing to take that stuff and be like, hey, listen, we really value um, you being uh, curious and wanting to develop those skills as we go along and we'll help you along the way. So, and what I'm also interested in as well too, is Ranem noted, uh, I believe you said your uh, your university degree is in, is it electrical engineering? Yeah. Yeah, so that's another thing that jumped out to me too, because for those that uh, may, be, um, may be apprehensive about, well, I don't have a degree in computer programming, I don't have, yeah. I don't have software, I'm not a software engineer, so maybe there's no way I can do this kind of stuff. So it really is encouraging for, I, from my experience, talking to those who are interested in tech, um, being able to think, okay, well, just because I do one degree doesn't mean that I'm just stuck in that kind of area forever, but I can use skills on those to kind of pursue a career in tech, maybe. Uh, would you say that, uh, Ranem, sorry, it's an extra, it's an extra question, but would you say that um, even though um, it's a different discipline, would you still feel that you were able to use skills that you developed in university towards your current career? Yeah, of course. At university, I studied so much uh, mathematics, for example. I studied so much uh, electrical engineering and physics and this stuff, okay? And in data science, okay, specifically in data science, there are there is a lot of math which uh, really... Um, uh, help me a lot and make me outstanding in this field because I understand the math actually. Okay, from my uh, from my uh, uh, electrical engineering degree. So that's how it it really uh, helped me. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, because that's something that um, even going for myself, part of my role at Workforce Windsor Essex involves going into high schools, career classes. And one thing that I like to stress a lot is that by being able to kind of get those um, transferable skills like mathematics and having a strong drive for problem solving, that will just open your options up even more. So then you kind of have that, you have a bit more choice when it comes to any interest that you might have, especially in, in just about any kind of work, but specifically in tech as well. And that yeah. even ties into what Frank was saying earlier about how that combined with having those really strong soft skills. If you, it seems that if you really um, are interested in this career or a career in tech and you think, okay, you know what, I have these, tech, I have an uh, interest in this, I'm going to think about what I may have already learned in my discipline and then combine that with being maybe a strong team player, that that'll really set you up for a lot of success when it comes to looking for employment in the sector as well, too. So it's really valuable that both of you are bringing such different perspectives, but also meeting at the same place for what it means to succeed in um, the technical sector. So that's really great to hear. And kind of to what, uh, before we go into the uh, open Q&A section uh, for this, uh, we kind of like to round it off with um, what advice that you two might have for someone considering a career in professional scientific or technical services. What would you recommend for them to have the best chance of success as possible? And we'll start off with Frank. Well, my uh, answer to that always is you're making your connections. So if, if I look at my career professionally after graduating from university, there's three companies I've ever been involved in professionally and two were referred for me to work at. So connections is always a big one. Make your connections, 
with your fellow students, with uh, every, anyone that you might see in co-op, if you're intern, anyone you meet at a networking event, anyone that's on this call. So make your connections, reach out to them. The advice I have is when you do reach out is you don't want to attack them and, and say, you know, I'm looking for a job I want to work for. Here's my resume. Build the relationship first. Look at companies. Uh, we all have access to LinkedIn. Look at companies that you want to be a part of and connect with HR managers and managers and CEOs of those corporations. Some will connect, some won't. Some will respond, some won't, and that's okay. But that's my advice on top of all the other good stuff that we said. There's a lot of people, especially in the Windsor-Essex community, that really want to help each other and uh, are out there to uh, open some doors. And that's really the key. There's one of my mentors. Uh, she is applying to three different places and encouraged her, two of them that I knew in terms of who to actually send the specific information to and use me as a reference, for example. So again, the name drop is not something that we normally do, but in a professional environment like that, to help open the door, there's a lot of people that will extend themselves to help you. And uh, everyone would like you to see, uh, have the career and then advance in your career. Because remember, if we all help each other and we all do better, just imagine how wonderful this uh, whole community is going to be. So that's that's kind of been my take on uh, this in the last little while. So connect with me on LinkedIn if you're not, and uh, I'd be happy to continue the conversation. If there's any way I can help, I'd be glad to help. Great, great. And yourself, Renem. Okay, uh, my advice actually for someone who's considering a career in the tech sector is particularly to uh, particularly in web development, uh, is to learn and practice as much as uh, as possible. Build a strong portfolio and uh, networking, 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 as uh, Frank said, because if you build strong portfolio and you've been the best web developer, okay, without being networking and without the people know you, this will actually value nothing, okay? So, and also embrace the growth uh, uh, mindset because it is very hard way. Okay, it's very hard to to be in the tech sector. So you you will be failed once and not once actually many times. So you have to embrace the growth mindset. Focus on the problem solving and communicate effectively with others is also very important uh, soft skills. All right, great. So once again, uh, our panelists are doing a great job at kind of tying everything really well uh, together because it's kind of bringing in the aspect of being motivated to work and improve yourself when it comes to those uh, technical skills with the new um, abilities to come in as things evolve in the industry, but also to be able to have a strong sense of being able to work with others and knowing the value of that as well, too. So when it comes, so from our perspective, being able to um, ask this sort of stuff. It's really nice that we can kind of get this on the record where two people with very different backgrounds coming into uh, this industry can have the same uh, experience when it comes to that as well. So that's really great to see. Okay, well, those are all of our questions. Thank you so much for answering them. We're gonna open it up to our attendees right now. So if anyone has any questions for our panelists, um, please put them in the Q&A section of the webinar and uh, hopefully we can get some interesting responses. And if I actually, just to kind of jump in while people are filing in their questions as well, um, I have a question of my own that I'd like to follow up with uh, with uh, Ranem. Um, I was curious as to what you found was the biggest um, uh, difference when it came to working. Uh, obviously, one of our questions was about uh, the benefits of working in Windsor Essex in the tech sector. But I was curious as to what you would say the biggest difference is working in the tech sector in Windsor Essex compared to your home country. Okay. Um, actually, here in Windsor Essex or, or Canada, let's say in general, okay, there is very out, outstanding uh, companies. And uh, that's really awesome. Uh, even uh, I was in Jordan, okay, they, there were so many events, uh, there were so many, uh, let's say, uh, companies there that work in uh, tech sector, but I found out that here in Canada, it is more outstanding and more professional, so I really like here, and uh, that's it. 
Gotcha. Great. Yeah. Cause it kind of jumped up to me as well too, because a lot of the, we were, when we we're talking about getting those skills through university and other training and stuff like that too, a lot of those from what you're saying were learned from uh, being in Jordan. So yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah. So it's very interesting that even still with obviously more opportunities that were here in Canada yeah. and specifically in Windsor, Essex, that still there was those opportunities to get those skills to learn yeah. that kind of stuff. So thank you for answering that. I was, I was curious listening about that. Thank you. All right. And actually, I do have another follow up question for <laughs> Frank uh, when it comes to, uh, yeah, thank you. When it comes to uh, working your work at AlphaCore, there's a lot of collaboration that you had mentioned when it comes to the local tech community in here, too. You had mentioned even before the call how uh, We Tech Alliance is doing their uh, Tech Week event as well, too. So this was a very, um, this is a, a this is the way that this all worked out was very nice, very fortuitous. So I was curious as uh, to how you find uh, that a collaboration could even extend beyond um, the border of the Canada of Canada, United States. Do you find there's a lot of collaboration between firms in Windsor and firms in Detroit? There is a lot of collaboration. I'm I'm not personally directly involved with it. I know with the organizations I've been involved. You mentioned WeTech. There, there is things that are happening on both sides of the border. When I mentioned cyber, I was instrumental in uh, someone challenged the IT community. They don't know enough about cyber and autonomous vehicles. And it's interesting, you know, I encourage everyone to have a voice. So I contacted this gentleman direct, sat down in my office at my little round table, had a coffee chat. So long story short, Windsor Essex is now going to be in the National EV Expo Show in Toronto in May because of that conversation. Oh, so wow. everyone can make a difference out there. Um, I grew up uh, in a whole different background in business, leadership. None of that was in any of my makeup at all. So if I can overcome uh, all my challenges that I had to uh, to get into this career, anyone can do it. So I encourage everyone have a voice. When I get asked, uh, I just want to add, if I uh, may. People always ask, you know, Alpha Course is our fourth physical location in Windsor. And I always get asked, why are we in Windsor? Why aren't we in Detroit? Why aren't we in Toronto? And my answer is, and, and is always going to be, why not Windsor? And so I haven't seen anyone be able to combat that, especially today with what's going on and all our exciting announcements and resources. I think everyone in the community today that's starting and looking to advance their career one, we're more aware of all the resources there are, and there are a lot of re resources, just like like your team uh, at Workforce, right? So there's a lot of great things that I personally didn't even know about 20 some years ago, didn't have any idea. Yeah, sure, we were kind of where they were there, but how to reach out to them, how to engage. So it's, it's, it's interesting how it's kind of evolved, where I think now there's a lot of great resources. We just have to ask. <laughs> Just ask for help or guide me in the right direction, please. <laughs> yeah, and thinking about where we are geographically, even you mentioned as well, Toronto, that not only were you across the, the river from Detroit, but we're also between Detroit and Toronto and, Kitch mm -hmm. and the Kitchener-Waterloo area as well, too, which is a huge burgeoning uh, tech sector there and has been for a long time. So hearing that question again, why not Windsor? And seeing the opportunities that are in this area, again, Obviously, we're a little bit biased, but when we can see the facts on the ground that people are having great opportunities for collaboration and things like, again, um, a conversation like you had can have that ripple effect of being represented at these amazing events and those networking opportunities as well, too. It seems like the future is very, very bright for the uh, sector in our area, and that's only going to get even more so as time goes on. So thank you for taking that extra question as well. And. Uh, from that, uh, well, we'd like to thank each, uh, thank our, both of our panelists so much for joining us today and being able to share your experiences. Uh, if you want to learn more about the sector, you can visit our career library on Workforce Windsor Essex's website that will be able to give you information on what the different careers there are in our area and how you can uh, reach that through education or being able to see what would be involved for working in those jobs. We do have a quick survey for all of our attendees today. So please click the link in the chat box to provide feedback for the section and it won't take very long and we appreciate it. Um, for those who couldn't event, attend the live event, if you have any questions about our sector events or questions for our speakers, please feel free to email us at info at workforcewindsoressex.com. 
Um, please don't forget to check out our past speaker events highlighting careers on the Workforce Windsor Essex website. And thank you everyone for attending today and we hope everyone has a great afternoon. Cheers, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.